AMD's RX 7000 is looking, stacking up to be a mighty competitor. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just wanna remind you that our official UFD hot news merch is gonna be expiring at the end of the month. So you have two days left in order to pick up some of our new Q1 merch, whether it's the Vaporwave, UFD fan, UFD startup, and no maiden shirt, they're gonna be gone. So you have just a few days in case you want the latest merch. But what I want is the latest GPUs. I like finding out about them. And let me tell you about that because we got a lot of leaks coming Coming out with regards to AMD's next gen RX 7000 series, and especially when the release date for these should be. So, according to a well known leaker of Greymon, he indicates that the N31 chip, which is going to be the 7900 XT, is being taped out Q3 of 2021, and we expect a release date to happen before the end of the year. But then the Navi 33, which is going to be the more mid tier card, is going to be taped out towards the end of the year, and then the in between card of like the 7800 XT is looking to be taped out in Q3. Q1 2022. So towards the end of this year, over six months, it looks like we're actually going to be getting AMD's next generation GPUs, but also getting some price indication from this leak as well. Somebody asking, can you give a guesstimate of the N33 pricing? And he indicates that it's going to be between four and five hundred dollars, which does seem to be a price uptick over the current Navi 23 GPU, something like the 6600 XT. You can see that's going for three hundred and seventy nine dollars right now. So that would increase the price by quite a bit. Also doesn't take into account count any sort of scalping that might happen during the time, but it does look like AMD might be charging a little bit more for their GPUs, even on the next generation. And according to the reports that we're hearing yesterday from NVIDIA's next generation GPUs, those are going to suck so much power that it might, uh, you might, end, and a lot of people might end up wanting to go AMD, which if they charge more, they make more profit. Good capitalism all around. Can I get a ha oh, yeah for capitalism? <laughs> That wasn't what I wanted. But also, it turns out that AMD is starting to work on their driver enablement for the RX 7000 series GPUs. Linux drivers now popping up for these next gen GPUs, which is usually the indication that they're starting to work on all of that behind the scenes. But even more, we got more details coming out about the 7900 XT and even below, according to Moore's Law is Dead's sources. It appears that Navi 31 and 32 are both going to be multiple die setups, having differences of five nanometer dies and six nanometer dies and a ton of infinity cache. But the one thing to look at is the reports that it's gonna be between 90 and 130% faster than the 6900 XT in pure rasterization performance, or put simply in better gaming because it's not ray tracing and all of that kind of stuff. So being double what is one of the fastest cards out on the market, in a lot of cases, the fastest rasterized card on the market, going to be double that. And according to the report, between 375 and 450 watts. So doubling the performance for essentially what a 3090 Ti's power draw is right now. And the 6900 XT and the 3090 Ti go toe to toe right now. So there's a lot of reasons to be excited for AMD's next generation. A lot of rumors are indicating that RDNA 3 is gonna be a breakout generation for AMD, potentially putting them at the top. Also given the power targets that we're seeing, it does look like it actually might be much more efficient than Nvidia. And that's why we're hearing reports from Nvidia side that they're jacking up the power because that's the only way that they're going to compete. But to complete out the rumor, it does look like PCI Express 5.0 is going to be coming to the RX 7000 series GPUs. And for Navi 32, it's also going to be multiple dies, but again, launching in the first half of 2023. And then indicating that potentially RDNA 4 is going to use GDDR7 VRAM as opposed to the current generation's GDDR6, but that's that's pretty far away. So an RX 7600 XT for between four and $500, which allegedly, according to the rumors, is going to perform the exact same as a 6900 XT, then a 7900 XT that's probably going to be around the thousand dollars that doubles the performance of the 6900 XT. Maybe they'll go up to 1200 bucks, but it's looking pretty good from AMD. Are you waiting for RX 7000 series? Let me know down below in the comments, but you don't have to wait for new GPUs from AMD much longer. According to reports, we should be getting the X50 refresh of the 6000 series on May 10th. So just in a few weeks, the RX 6950 XT OC formula from ASRock is passing through the EEC filings, so it looks like we should be getting it sometime soon. And in case you want really high-end stuff that you can stick in your PCI Express slots, which I know I'm a fan of sticking high-end stuff in my slots, Grade is getting their supercharged RAID card up to 19 million IOPS and 110 gigabytes per second. And 110 gigabytes? Is that gigabytes? 
freaking gigabytes. That's not even gigabits. That's insane. So in case you're not familiar with Grade, it's a way of handling NVMe RAID and NVMe over fabrics using an NVIDIA GPU accelerator on a PCI Express slot. It can create a whole crazy situation. I'm actually working with the software architect of this company in order to do our PS5 DPU experiment, which you can check out the video where we're essentially begging NVIDIA to help write us custom firmware for this entire setup. So go check that out and tweet at NVIDIA for us because we really need your help. But cool stuff that they're launching new things that go super fast, good stuff. And Snapchat launched something that goes super slow. I guess they they have a drone. Did you know that Snapchat has a drone? a drone? As of today, they launched a drone. Where did they launch it? Out of their palm of the hand. The Pixie Snapchat drone is supposed to take images and pictures of you. I'm not quite sure what Snapchat does. I, I think I'm a little too, I, I was too old for it when it came out and I, like I, I, I didn't have anybody who was on it and like I could get set up on Snapchat, but I never did. Anyways, it's gonna sell for $230. A lot of people being like, what what is this? Why are, why are you doing a little handheld drone thing? And when asked of this, the CEO of Snapchat said, because we're a camera company. Did you know Snapchat's a camera company? No. It is according to Evan Spiegel says our mission is to empower people to express themselves, live in the moment, learn about the world and have fun together. And this product does exactly that. If you say so, Snapchat CEO, it only weighs 100 grams and it can fly five to eight times for 10 to 20 seconds. And if you want extra batteries, that's 20 bucks. You want a portable dual battery charger? That's 50 bucks, all right? It can shoot up to 100 videos or a thousand photos on a 16 gigabyte drive. Oh, this thing's gonna be great. This is the loveliest camera technology I've ever seen in my entire life, Snapchat. Good on you, mate. And good on Sony for releasing the variable refresh rate update for the PS5 and unlocking FPS for console gamers everywhere. Because according to new benchmarks that are coming out of PlayStation 5 games that actually had locked frame rate on certain modes, when you enable VRR, not only does it allow you to actually use things like FreeSync, but it actually unlocks the frame rate. So in certain games like Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, you can get up to 96 FPS on the ray trace performance mode, whereas before you were locked to about 60 FPS. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, you get up to 70 FPS. On Ratchet and Clank, you can go up to 110 FPS when it was previously locked at 60. So it does look like a large increase all around. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you wanna check out the frame rate test in comparison of the VRR mode. But it does look like in case you want console gamers to have faster frame rate, they just, they just need to update their PlayStation. Actually, I've heard reports that the VRR update was sent through a software update a while ago. And so all you need to do is restart your PlayStation and then you'll see it in the options menu. You don't even need to download anything. Sony was just like, here, here you go. Have the whole thing. Too bad they won't do that for my freaking DPU project. What's up with Sony not wanting me to hack their thing? Jealous haters, Sony, the entire, don't sue us, please. Don't don't give us a YouTube community guideline strike like N Nintendo did. That stupid butthole company taking down the whole of UFD tech for an entire freaking week. My goodness, I'm not salty anymore. Don't forget that you can only get our merch for the next two days, linked in the video description. With that being said, I'll see you on things that I do later. I'm slapping, I'm bye.